Yeah, how did I come to believe in universal reconciliation? I think as a, as a kid, I always hoped that something like that would be true because I had a really great dad and I understood that God was my father and I couldn't imagine that if God was my father, he'd be worse than my dad and I just couldn't conceive of my dad endlessly torturing me. So uh, in seminary, uh, as a youth pastor, I wrestled with the idea when I was at Fuller and got uh, Fudge's book, The Fire That Consumes, and was excited about annihilationism. Then when I began preaching expositional sermons, I began bumping into all these passages that talked about God making all things new, as an atom all die, so in Christ will all be made alive. And I couldn't figure out how to reconcile those with other passages. The more I studied, the more I realized that they could be reconciled once I reanalyzed some of the some of the terms and what was meant by Hades and Sheol, Gehenna. And so I just got excited about it. Meanwhile, um, my church was growing really fast and uh, I, had, I had prayed that God would be more real to me and I ended up praying for a friend of ours that had been raised in this satanic coven. This is a part of the story that some people have a hard time believing. But over about 10 years praying for her, I was just amazed at how Jesus would deliver her. And we would pray, for instance, for the fire of God to fall upon the room. And the fire would burn what was evil in her and then comfort us. And I began to realize, oh, God's fire is God's love. And God's character never changes. He stays the same. Meanwhile, I'm preaching through the Revelation. I'm preaching through all these uh, texts of scripture that I thought didn't allow for ultimate reconciliation. But the more I preached, the more I realized that they did. Uh, meanwhile, some people complained to my denomination about what I was saying. They came out and, uh, and these were people that I knew. They said, you can't say this stuff. And I said, what stuff? And they said, you know this stuff. And I did know the stuff. It was what I called in one old video, Bible verses banned by Bible believing believers. And so they asked me to kind of defend that. They couldn't figure out where I was unbiblical. So I had to state my exceptions to the Westminster Confession of Faith. Well, long story short, the more I wrestled with it, the more I realized the emperor has no clothes and they can't defend this position and no one really wants to defend that position. Um, I also read theologians like like Bart that my dad had really liked when when my dad was alive and began to realize that early church fathers said this. Anyway, God kind of arranged that to sort of push me out of the closet. It was comfortable to say I, I kind of don't know, we'll leave that to mi mystery and yet I felt like God kept asking me from to preach from scripture and then also revealed that it was important and I began to realize that it was important because people were um, they were offended by salvation which in my understanding that's human flesh human flesh is offended by grace and so I kept preaching and um, was removed from my church and then we started the sanctuary 14 years ago um, Personally, what I love about the whole position is that uh, people say, what difference does it make? And I say, well, it means that you can be a Christian and like it. Um, God is absolutely lovable and, and he's entirely good. He's always better than you thought. And so I can love my neighbor as myself, love the Lord my God without reservation. So it, it changes absolutely everything. So for me, it, it, like it allows me to live a Christian life.